is Rory O'Toole. And my name is Matt Schultz. And this is How to Be. The podcast where we discuss ancient wisdom, modern hacks, paperback self-help books, and pithy platitudes. In the hopes of figuring out the best way to live this one precious and wild life. Do you like summing everything up? What about reflecting on the past as you look forward to the future? If so, join us as we look back at a thrilling first season of the How To Be podcast and speculate about what's to come. Hi, Matt. Hey, Roar. Um, so today I watched some of the World Cup. No. Yeah, because you know, I wake up in the Is morning. It France? And... It's France, Argentina, the final of the World Cup. I saw such a line this morning. Millions yeah, yeah. of miles long waiting to get into a bar where they were playing it. Oh, well, and they were wearing French shirts, they were wearing berets and No, but it was a French place. Oh. Anyway, so I was drinking. I in the morning I drink my coffee. I turn on the TV. I have basic channels. I usually just scroll and find something on, but it was the World Cup and I was about to change. But then your boss, I remember how you said your boss was like mesmerized. Mm -hmm. So I was like, let's see if this is mesmerizing. And I have to say, I joined the game at the very end. They're already in overtime, tied three to three. And then it went into penalty shots. And these announcers really made you feel like everything that was happening was exciting. Like every time they tried to make, they went in for a goal, like before the penalty shots, they, they try and make a thousand goals and none of them go through. But every time they kick for a goal, the announcer's like, I think they're going for the goal and they just shot the shot and it's not good. You know? And yeah. you're like, oh my God, it's going to be a goal. And then it never is. But the theater of it all made me really appreciate, made me appreciate that, you know, a, a good host like us mm, can it's really... All about the hosting skills. It's all about the hosting skills, I think. Yeah, you know, I think... Yeah, they really bring it. Mm-hmm. They have to bring a lot of energy. Yes. Because it's kind of a boring sport. That's my philosophy. That's your take. And I agree with you on that. And I was very impressed with the, They must have the best of the best announcing that game because it's the final of the World Cup, which apparently is like the most watched sporting event in the universe. Well, I wonder, yeah, who are the announcers? Are they former players? I have no idea. They, I like mean... They have, they were, they were Native American English speakers. So they probably have different ones at different for different broadcasts. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a very special episode today. We are going through what our work from this season and discussing what we've learned and how we've changed and how we've changed the world. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a year in review. Um, and okay, so Matt, we started this podcast in June. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, let's take a broader look personally for you, aside from the podcast. How was your year? What's your year in review look like? Uh, not just podcast related. No, take it outside of the podcast. How was your year? How was 2022? How was 33 to 34? Academic year 33 to 34? Yeah, I think <laughs> I think it's been a great year for me. Mm. Um, I've really enjoyed, especially the past six months, moving back to Israel, being in Jerusalem has been wonderful. Mm-hmm. Um, right now I'm back in Boston for a trip and it's reminding me how much I didn't like living here. <laughs> Not Sad for me. For me. Cold, gray city. Mm-hmm. And this cold, gray country in general. Um, I mean, I guess California is less cold and gray. Not cold or gray, neither. Cold, neither cold nor gray. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so in the six months before that, who can remember? It was a, I, I've had a good mental health year, I think. You have, yeah. That's what's most yeah. important. There you go. Yeah. 
I had a banner year, even though you think my life is just fine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> As we've established in a couple episodes of the podcast, <laughs> I <laughs> enjoy my fine life. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, really not much to complain about. No? No, besides my zits, which I'm never allowed to complain about to you. You can complain about them in measure. Matt doesn't like it when I talk oh, about ad, so- ad nauseum about my deep blind pimples that cut pop up every couple months. <laughs> Another thing of my year in review, I just posted this my favorite things list of the year. Oh yeah. So I did that last year too. If you uh, had to say your number one favorite thing of the year, what would it be? I think the color teal. The col- you're not wearing any teal right now. Right here. Oh right okay. Here. I have teal right here next to me. Is that a sweatshirt? So, yeah, it's a sweater. A, yeah, a sweatshirt. I still mm-hmm. get those confused. Um, okay, so last year's favorite things were, can I read them out? Yeah. Um, Turkish towels as scarves. I'm still wearing that right now. Um, grocery store bagels. Underrated, in my opinion. Um translucent page marker tabs for when you're taking notes in a book that you're reading i love those nail brush to clean your nails still very much into that jump rope not into that anymore long shoehorn overnight oats poetry window bird feeders orchids i think you've only dropped off on orchids and the other one jump ropes yeah never heard you mention an orchid before yeah i know (laughs) So this year, Ticonderoga Pencils, classic. Network procedural dramas. I'm over the streaming prestige, services. Prestige yeah. television. Yeah. Give me a 20 episode season. Give me a new case each week. Yeah. Um, a special type of yarmulke, a Bukharian style yarmulke. It's very big. You've seen me wear it before. Mm-hmm. Mock it's very turtle. Afrocentric. Mm-hmm. It's actually Georgian. <laughs> it's very Georgian centric. But very you know, cool. like what I'm talking about with those Afro centric, like Pan African mm, yeah, little like hats. A yeah. Head dress. And um, yeah, te- the color teal, mock turtlenecks, and lemon poppy seed muffin uh cookies. Yum. I'll think about my favorite things throughout the episode and I'll, I'll give an update at the end. Kimonos. Was that kimono last year? I think that was this year. Okay, uh, so so we both had a good year, which we need years. to appreciate because who knows about next year? You know, only so who much knows. you can control. Um, and one big thing we both did was start this podcast in June. We started. I think we recorded like fifteen episodes. Matt, mm-hmm. you've listened to all fifteen episodes, right? <laughs> I believe I have. <laughs> Is there anything you learned about what you think that you didn't know from listening back to yourself? I'm going to go first. So for me, I learned that in a podcast, you can't give an exhaustive list of your opinions. Mm. So it's only an hour long and there's so much more I'd want to go back and say. I also learned that I'm very predictable. Like I will record this episode and then I'll edit it a little bit or I'll edit it a few days later or a week later or sometimes. And um, you'll say something and then I'll think something like, oh, well, da, da, da. And then you, and then I say it. Like, I'm very predictable in my responses. Yeah, when you listen back to it, you know, you re- your brain reacts the same way to what exactly, I say. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I definitely learned those things too. I So before we start going into specific episodes... Um, we had a listener ask us for some clarity about one of our key concepts that we've brought to the public this year. Yeah, we actually have a couple listener questions. Do you want to do those now? Yeah, I think that'd be great. I well, I've been thinking a lot about the first one, which was which was what is we often talk about GMs, gross moderns. What is that? Now we discussed this last night and I realized that part of we don't really completely have a grasp on it ourselves we have a feel for it yeah we don't have an articulation of it perfectly it's yeah but i want to i i I took some notes on a way i think it can be explained okay great so sometimes we look back on the past 
and we go, wow, those people had weird values and did weird, stupid, gross, messed up things. Like you know? what? Tortured people in the public square. Yeah, I, that, the, so I wrote dumping feces in the streets, thinking mentally ill people are possessed, eating out <laughs> of unwashed maggot infested wooden bowls, trial by ordeal, um, <laughs> these kind of things. So, but we don't often think about this about our own time. What are the weird things we believe in the gross values we have? Well, me and Rory, because we're too in it, me and Rory do think about that. So just like there are gross ancients, mm-hmm. we also admire the ancients. We might admire the ways of the ancients, but there's also gross ancient behavior. There's also gross modern behavior. And these are some notes I took on what that means to me. Um, the discourse of getting one's steps in. Yes, so GM. Like that way of relating to walking as getting your steps in so like product focused talking about one's personal brand you don't think king henry the eighth felt like he had a personal brand no i think he just (laughs) ironic tattoos oh you know like having like a yeah that relation like a steve urkel tattoo yeah like and what that (laughs) implies about your like relationship to your body um Neuralink. What's Neuralink? Actually, just w- Elon Musk's like brain computer. Oh, and Apple Watch is all wearable tech. Mm-hmm. So, GMs are people. Yeah, that. Do you get it, people? Are you feeling what I'm? For what I'm me, like it, it. The epitome is like the Amy's frozen microwavable tamales. Mm. just like mm-hmm. the way that we like that as frozen food is very gm to me because it's like there's no pleasure in it or like um soylent also soylent very- so gm yeah yeah there th- lots of different things can be gm mm-hmm. and we we're all gms in one way or another of course i'm obsessed with my steps I'm obsessed with my steps. I got 20,000 yesterday. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> I love that you're cocking your head to the side. This was actually you just talking about GM was just an excuse to tell everyone how many steps you got. It was just a yes. long introduction to telling everyone. My you brand. Got 20. <laughs> Someone who gets a lot of steps in is my brand. Um, yeah, so that that question was texted to me from a friend and it inspired me to go to Instagram and ask, is there any, are there any questions you all have for us about the pod? And then another question we got was what is our inspiration? And I think what they meant was maybe for each episode, like how do we choose our topics Mm. and how do we choose our topics? We choose them from what we're kind of talking about. We have a list. Yeah. We have a Google doc. Uh Uh-huh. And We choose them based on if we have time to do heavy research or light research. Mm -hmm. Whatever sparks our interest. Yeah. We always have our eyes peeled for a juicy topic. Exactly. If there's something that's percolating in our minds and we've been talking about it or something that an idea that excites us, it goes on that list. What's next? How did we meet? (laughs) (laughs) Who asked that? Uh, Someone who knows. We were in a cult together at Sarah Lawrence College, (laughs) run by a former Marine um, (laughs) who was the father of a friend who lived in a dorm room with us. And (laughs) what Matt is referring to is the um, New York Magazine story and the forthcoming documentary about a cult that happened at our college where we did meet. Now, Matt and I were graduated, recently graduated when that cult formed. But we met in our dorms, right? Do you remember the first time we met? Um, Birthday cake? Maybe. Your birthday, you had like 15 cakes? Yeah, that was so nice of my friends. Yeah, that was cute. Um, Yeah, we met then and became progressively closer over the years. Yeah. Okay, last question. Any ideas 
Are there any ideas that I that you wanted to do for the show that I vetoed or that I vetoed that or that have we vetoed any of each other's ideas? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, you almost vetoed you almost vetoed donating a kidney, but I pushed for it. Yeah, and I that was one of my favorite episodes. I didn't think that we were going to have enough material for an hour long of donated a kidney, but we really did. We really did. Um, have I vetoed any of your ideas? I really wanted to do an episode on the dating book, The Rules, and we tried to record it and it didn't work. Mm. And you were like, I just don't even want to try this again. Yeah, we could reinvestigate that next season. And I also vetoed travel recently. Oh, you did veto travel. Because I thought it would make us sound too privileged. (laughs) Yeah, I think I think that's absurd. (laughs) (laughs) That reminds Uh, me of like Lindy West's review of Love Actually, where she calls out the movie for opening in an airport because (laughs) not everyone is wealthy enough to have been on a plane. (laughs) We make a movie about things that are accessible to every person on earth. (laughs) No, I just, I was feeling like, what if I say bad things about travel? You know, I, I think you're right. I think you're right in the end. Well, we can reinvestigate that next season, too. You know, we're in different places at different times in our lives. So, Matt, our first episode was How to Do Nothing, okay? And I think we were really uh, moved by that book. Are you still doing nothing? Which, by that, I mean the real essence of the book, being local. How Uh, local are you being? I'm being pretty local, but I'm not doing nothing. So, I think before... And I talked to you about this recently, my frustration with the inability to pick up momentum in life mm-hmm. as a constant interruptions. Mm-hmm. Um, such as? Such as coming on this trip right now, moving to Israel six months ago, getting COVID a few weeks ago, interrupted, interrupted. So I was, before I moved to Israel, I was in such a... a, a, a Groove, a flow? A flow, a groove with meditation, constantly meditating. You know, where's Matt? He's meditating. <laughs> um, and moving to Israel just disrupted it, disrupted my routine. And you know, we talked about this in the in habits. I don't know if we actually talked about it, but in the habits book, he talked about how much like changing your location is disruptive to habits. Mm -hmm. which can mean it's a great way to break a bad habit. And he talked about how like these Vietnam war soldiers who are like all addicted to heroin came back home and just never did heroin again, contradicting pretty much everything we think we know about addiction, but Mm -hmm. it was just like completely different environment. So yeah, my, my meditation, my doing nothing, my zoning out that was interrupted more recently, I've been on this digital minimalism kick, which I think is going to have to be an episode two. And that keeps getting, you know, when I was on on COVID, when I had COVID, I was like, I'm going to look at Instagram 24 hours a day. Like a GM, that's very GM thing to do. Um, so how am I doing on doing nothing? Bad. I'm doing something. My brain. Oh, and you want to talk to me about this lately, Recently, you feel like your brain is melting from screens. Oh, melting. I'm melting. Ever since I got back from Italy, where I was very off screen, obviously. Oh, how privileged of you. A trip to Italy? Did you stay at the White Lotus? Um, Ever since I got back from Italy, I've been like, I don't know, like scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. And the pleasure of it is it's anti-pleasure, actually. It sucks pleasure from my life. Oh, it's terrible. Like the other day, I didn't want to do yoga. And then I was like, well, what am I going to do instead? Scroll? That's even less pleasurable than putting on workout clothes and like falling on my mat right now, you know? Yeah. Yeah. There's like no I'd rather be in physical pain. Exactly. Then have more screen, bl- more reels blasted at your face. Yeah. And it's like, what is, what am I, I, I scroll and I scroll and I ask, what do I get from this? And the answer is nothing. Nothing. 
Well, when I had COVID and I was scrolling, I was truly lolling at some of these reels. No, sometimes the and the internet, and I would never be someone who's like, I'm getting off for sure for you know, totally. Cause sometimes these cat videos, they get me, whatever. Like, I'm not saying it's a pleasureless place, but I'm saying the degree to which I'm doing it at this point and with the purpose I'm doing it is anti-pleasure. Yes, 100%. Um, but I would yeah. say I'm not doing so great at being local. I, it's hard for me to take my walks when it gets dark this early. I can't look at the birds. Mm. I'm, you know, blasting myself with content. content. Sometimes I think that the habits book and the how to do nothing book are a little bit at odds actually yeah because one is about being sort of undirected and in the moment it is yeah and the other is i think there's a way to read them in synthesis well like for example when i'm flossing it's like should i be blasting myself with a podcast to make it better or should i just be really feeling it and learning to deal with the boring three minutes you know oh my god the boring three minutes i have such trouble being away from content for even one second (laughs) one second is too much (laughs) it's like it's really bad it's so gm yeah it is so gm like Mm -hmm. today i was in the bathroom at my little hotel putting um various skincare products on my face no content i was like look at me (laughs) You know, the fact that I felt proud of myself for being in the bathroom for one second without a podcast <laughs> or a TV when you, show. When is, you wake up in the morning and you're doing your morning toilet, do you have content on? Um, Depends what part of the toilet. Obviously, when I'm like praying, doing my Jewish prayer, the prayer is the content. No, yeah, exactly. That's not, uh, yeah. But when I'm flossing i floss with content you floss in the morn yeah oh that's wise why because you get it done with yeah done with yeah you you know how i feel about flossing it's like my real it's my matterhorn (laughs) i know well i didn't bring floss on this trip purposely yeah i was like fuck it I'm on vacation. <laughs> yeah, my floss is my flossing has really fallen off since Italy. I'm doing it like three days a week, four days a week. See, routine, routine, routine. The inability to gain momentum. It's really like it's really like hard. I know. And now it's, it's Christmas. More of a rut. And I think like the fact that I'm in grad school and I'm moving cities and I don't know where my life is. I, you know, it's all been very stressing me out. I want to dig my heels in. I want to carve a rut into the into the earth with repeated actions. And yeah, yeah, it's hard. You, you do well with a routine. I do. Yeah. I do. Um, okay, let's talk about some other episodes. One episode that I think people really liked and we liked minimalism. And you came out hard against it. Do you feel like you've been living this year as a maximalist? A maxinista? I mean, oh my goodness, the shopping I did yesterday. Mm. But I I lead a pretty minimalist lifestyle. Like I don't believe in, I don't believe that I need that much stuff. But the way those guys talked about minimalism... Or the idea that having less stuff is a value in and of itself. Mm -hmm. I don't agree with. Like, I think that's, yeah, it's like, I like, I do like stuff. Yeah, I mean. My favorite things list. They, they, instead of worshiping at the altar of stuff, they worship at the altar of minimalism. Yeah. It's idolatry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, they were major idolaters. Um, and it was a false god. They, th- you know, capitalism and like, I, I don't like, you know, I'm going to correct myself there. I don't like being one of those millennials who talks about capitalism. Mm-hmm. I will, however, talk about consumerism. Mm-hmm. Amen. Consumerism is certainly a false idol, but absolutely minimalism can too, especially that sort of aestheticized white man's black t-shirt jeans 
minimalism. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Minimalism as personality trait. Yeah. I really hope I move this year because I want to get rid of shit so badly, but it's so hard with it when you never move. Yeah. A never well, move. That's that's me. the thing. I think the one of the brilliant parts of the magic art of tidying up is take it all out and put it on the ground and put it back in. Mm-hmm. Because it's hard to pluck things out and get rid of them. You need to de- you need to take everything out and decide what you want to put back in. Mm-hmm. And that's also the method of digital minimalism, by the way. He says, take stop, do don't do any unnecessary digital activities for a month and then decide what you want to reintegrate. Well, we'll get there when we do an episode on it. I know. Right now it's just like something I talk about in every episode. <laughs> Have you finished the book? Oh yeah. I'm just living oh, yeah. the life now. No, you're just living the life. Okay. <laughs> My screen time has gone way down. Ugh. Okay, I hope to get there one day. Yeah. You know, I'm also a texter. Well, and he considers texting to be like a social media. And it's like, is it? I don't know. But not calling? No, he. I think he would consider calling too. But calling is such an important part of my life that I like. But it's also a way I blast myself with content. Mm-hmm. Also a way that I flee this present moment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe you should have like a calling Sundays. Sundays are for calling. Are you kidding me? I can't. Everyone besides me. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do that. That's way too few calls. But maybe I could have like Sundays are for not calling. For the most part, I try not to use my phone on Shabbat. Um, sometimes I'll give you a call. I wish I knew ahead of time what kind of a Shabbat it would be. Yeah, well, I often don't know myself. Because <laughs> I like to be intuitive on Shabbat. <laughs> well, you kind of, okay, moving on to another episode, another thing we did, you kind of gave an update on your habits. What were the two habits you were trying to do? You were trying to meditate. What was the other one? Oh, yeah, meditate and floss. No, I was floss. Okay, meditate. And meditate. I don't know. Meditate, I was doing amazing with until I moved. Was it, the, was it push-ups or something? No. I don't know. Okay. I don't remember. Probably <laughs> not still doing it. <laughs> if I was still doing it, I'd remember, presumably. Or it's like so integrated into my life now that I don't even like think of it as a new habit. When was the last time you meditated? Like two weeks ago. Okay. But then before that, like a month before you know like yeah yeah very very sporadic very sporadic okay um yeah i need to get back oh goddess hour goddess hour i need to just bring back goddess hour yeah i forgot about goddess hour oh, my new bedroom though is so not goddess like <laughs> i you know now i was with my old roommates this week and it's like that apartment was so cute and cozy Mm. new apartment is not cozy i need to get out of there you left it so much in the beginning what how did it reveal itself to you to be it's an i mean it's a beautiful place like it's uncozy pretty and it's in a beautiful neighborhood and the view outside the window is very inspiring uncozy inconvenient wall like impossible to clean because the walls are crumbling it's so like poorly constructed and old i gotta get out of there i need to get into a place where i gotta get out of there because yeah it's very not goddess my old room was like it glowed Mm. it was orangey and the lighting was like really you know like 70s bohemian beads for instead of a door yeah (laughs) lighting is everything i could we could do a whole episode on lighting Lighting is everything you can't have overhead lighting overhead lighting is the worst it's the worst and as a future rabbi i i really pay attention to how many um synagogues put thought into everything but lighting really it's not it's not their forte no it well, the synagogue where I intern, I think what I 
really connect with about them is how much care has been put into lighting. (laughs) And like, you know, when you learn about like the, the reactions that, that the public had to the development of halogen light bulbs after mm. being on um gas lights for so long mm-hmm. you read about we, that yeah what did the people think they thought it was vulgar and hideous oh. Oh. And, and completely unacceptable you know mm-hmm. kind of the way i feel about the mo- like to me halogen light bulbs are so romantic and fluorescence are so hideous right exactly yeah like the the move from halogen to fluorescent slash uh led Mm -hmm. and who knows what hideous development they'll come up with next um in fact you know that was one of the i think that was dare i say it one of the few things that trump did that i that i liked he scaled back those Obama regulations on halogen light bulbs, made it easier to get a nice, energy inefficient, <laughs> orangey, soft glow halogen bulb. Can't you get a soft? Can't you get like a LED orange glow? The, for some reason, they're hard to find. Oh, okay. Um, in my experience, and they're not quite the same. They're a little too powerful. But theoretically, there's no technological barrier to that. But yeah, this like trend towards white. Ew. Light, cool I know, like white light. Like everything's an Apple store. Like co- the coffee yeah. shop by me is like all about that white light. Oh, and I'm yeah, like, that place. yuckers. I don't want to sit in here for hours and hours. No, give me a smutty little orange fiery glow. <laughs> you know, with just like soot on the walls. Yeah. Um, Catholics do light right. Yeah. It's been a focus <laughs> throughout the centuries. Light aesthetically, Catholics do it do it well. Stained glass. Mm-hmm. They're like, let's filter that light. The sun's a bit much. <laughs> and the sun is a bit much. Oh my god, oppressive as someone who lives with the sun. A lot. <laughs> Let's get an update on quitting, Matt. Have you quit anything since our quitting episode? Um, I think you have. We already talked about that. I quit that fellowship. Oh, we already talked about that? Never mind. Yeah. Can't believe you don't remember that. Um, well, during Donate a Kidney, I got really excited about Donate a Kidney. Forgotten all about that since then. That was only a couple <laughs> days ago. <laughs> Yeah, I think you answered no when I when I posted the story about it. Are you yeah, thinking like, about eh, donating a kidney? No. You were like, no. No, so I quit that before I even really started. <laughs> um, I'm uh have not quit the gym. Yeah, that's true. Have you gone to the gym in your hotel yet? <laughs> no, I wish there was one. Um, do you have you quit anything? quit anything no i'm not a quitter quitters never say die um no, quitters say die quitters say die i'm a non-quitter and i never say die i don't think i've quit anything since i haven't quit anything for a long time mm-hmm. i could stand to quit some a few things in my life still in bell chorus still bell in bell choir. <laughs> You know what I was thinking today? I was thinking about your story about soccer and how your parents just told you it was over. Soccer's over. Um, I was thinking about how they could do that to you today if the fellowship was really <laughs> tapping into you. When you had that friction with them, they could have just been like, fellowship's over. Fellowship's over. They and you'd be like... like okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't look closely at the dates. <laughs> now having your shiz together oh my god i want to do a part two of that episode yeah i mean that's really what it's all about in a lot of ways Mm -hmm. um in you know different manifestations but i've i've been struggling with that lately struggling with money struggling with knowing what day things are happening Mm. really struggling with that i've been such a bad calendar queen lately because you haven't been writing it down you haven't been checking it haven't been writing it down haven't been checking it 
also like uh, so being a rabbinical student in Israel means that you're part of like eight different WhatsApp groups where there's constant messaging about a mixture of important things and nonsense. Mm-hmm. Someone pointed this out recently that WhatsApp has basically turned texting into emails, like things that people used to email. They now send in a WhatsApp. Okay. But so you think of WhatsApp, WhatsApp as someone who only uses WhatsApp for you, right? Just mm-hmm. so we can text when you're in Israel. You feel like it's different than just a right sending a text. Yeah, it has a different culture. It has a different vibe. It oh. has different um, possibilities. And yeah, there's all these important scheduling things that are happening. Mm-hmm. And there are people who are good at keeping up with that. And there are people who aren't. And I aren't. Okay, it's too much is probably what it is. Too much the WhatsApp? Yeah, it's probably too active to keep up with it. It's it's way too active. Is this a job, you know? But some yeah. people, like, that's the thing. I go to school with people who read every email. They, you, they need a Reader's Digest for the WhatsApp group. I need a personal assistant. There's you really no, need a PA. There's no way around it. <laughs> I'm not... Could you- could you ask for a personal assistant for Hanukkah? Oh, that'd be the best gift. <laughs> Branda. 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 <laughs> <laughs> this is a question me and Rory have been discussing. There's Brendan and Brandon. Does that mean that just like there's Brenda, there's Branda? A quick Facebook search reveals that there are not an infinite amount of Brandas out there. But, not as many as Brenda, for sure. But not none. No, nope. there are Brandas. There are Branda. Yeah, and I want, uh, I want Branda to be my PA, my personal assistant. Being French, Rory, you just went to Europe. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about the way the Europeans live as opposed to us ugly Americans? <laughs> Europeans, I love. Italy I really feel like I love it it's a thing I love in life I don't love much (laughs) it's one of your favorite things perhaps it's maybe one of my favorite things but I do one thing I really like about America that is just doesn't translate I find to other countries is the orderliness of it Mm. and I don't know if it's because it's like I'm just familiar with the way we do things and like it's it's not necessarily orderliness so much as knowing these like implicit systems and ways of doing things or if there's something more chaotic about europe well i think it also depends where in europe like people talk about like germany as a country where the trains really run on time and you know like more orderly than america in in that way i will say the frankfurt airport was not orderly no not efficient it was orderly but it wasn't efficient there are a lot of american airports that are quite chaotic also absolutely yeah you're right airports are kind of LaGuardia, according to late night hosts oh that's my least favorite and according to me my least favorite airport in america is guardia i haven't been there in so long i can't remember it i fly out of newark that's how much i hate it well newark's a great airport thank you Mm mm-hmm they have a it's very orderly. Um, so that's the only thing that, and that, and the ability to get like a more varied cuisine in America. Yeah, in America, I like that. Oh, you don't think you can get varied cuisine in Europe? Not in Italy. It's all Italian food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're like that's what food is, you know? Yeah, that's... you certainly can't get Mexican food. I mean, I think Mexican food is one of the. Uh, it's impossible to get good out of the Americas. I've had good Mexican food in Tel Aviv. I kind of just don't believe it. I'll have to eat it for myself before I would believe it. Well, it's, listen, am I saying it's the best? It's good. Um, I, I, I can't believe that there's not a Mexican restaurant in Italy. There is. I've been there but when I was bad. studying abroad and it was still there. I passed like a hundred times. 
horrible. Well, okay, so I've been living back and forth between America and Israel since 2009, let's mm-hmm. say. Mm-hmm. The Mexican food situation there today is not what it was in 2009. In 2009, it's one place, one, bad, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Un- almost unrecognizable as Mexican food. So it's still there, that place. But a scene has grown up around it. Um, I feel like... Israel, though, is just has way more like immigration. That's true. There's than more... a lot of European countries. I mean, yeah. a lot of European countries do have immigration, but more from like, let's say, North Africa. You know, they're not getting a lot of Mexicans there. Now, what about I mean, there must be. Is there sushi in Italy? Um, I never I, I never had sushi there. I've never had sushi there. There must be sushi in London, though. Sushi in London. Sam says that the food different. now my my partner travels to London multiple times a year, many, many times a year, right? That's like his one of his work home bases, essentially. Mm-hmm. He's in England a lot. And he says the food has improved a lot since he started going there regularly in like 2000, let's say eleven. But outside of London, you cannot get good food, basically, still. In all yeah. Well, why does British food have such a bad reputation? Because it's boiled meat and mushy peas. That doesn't sound terrible to me. You don't even eat meat. No, you like but mush though. Mush is your favorite texture. Most I people, do like mush. for most people, mush is not their favorite texture. <laughs> I think mush is. I think people are lying about it. I think people like mush more than they. Admit. This is another thing I love about you. Is like when you think something, you think people and they, other people feel differently, especially when it comes to taste. Yeah. Like how you felt for many years that no one really wanted coffee without sugar because you put sugar in your coffee. And now you don't even put sugar in your coffee. No, I don't think that's what it was. No, that's not. That was one example. Yes. No, you're miss. You're you're. And there's dark chocolate. You're missing the nuance of it. Okay. What's the nuance? I believe that acquired taste. Now I've. Uh, I don't put sugar in my coffee for a long time. I haven't put sugar in my coffee. I believe that acquired tastes are kind of just worse things, worse tasting things that we train ourselves to like because it seems more sophisticated, but that the objective desire of the human tongue obviously prefers the sweet and the salty. Now, I believe this even as someone who prefers his coffee without sugar, because I don't want a sweet thing all the time. And I just want to be drinking coffee all the time. So it would be too much for it to be sweet. But sweetness is objectively better, even if I've trained myself to be okay with this like bitter drink. See, I feel like as you get older, you actually very naturally don't want sweet as much. Yeah, because we train ourselves out of it. No, I don't. I think it's a. I think it would happen with or without the desire to be a person who doesn't like sweet. Well, in in non Western cultures, coffee remains sweetened throughout life. In um, African Africans drink sweet coffee. In Arab cultures, coffee is sweet, sweetened. Interesting. How much coffee are they drinking? I don't know. Yeah, but there's all. So you're thinking, you're, do you said think that all taste is cultural? No, I think that. There's also like. A, I think that there are certain tastes that humans are naturally oh, right. drawn to. And maybe we, you know, culturally sort of tamper with it by attaching value judgments to it. Like, I basically think that like, on like the being able to like a worst tasting thing is a status symbol that was probably created to show a distinction between those who know and those who don't in the same way as like wearing white after labor day was like a rule (laughs) that was created so you'd be able to spot the new money and the old money like oh those lower class people don't know any better look at how they dump sugar into their coffee this is still very much true in america the 
the more like sort of elite you are, the more likely you are to drink unsweetened coffee. Whereas the lower you are on the socioeconomic ladder, the more likely you are to enjoy a sweetened coffee drink, like a Frappuccino from the Starbucks. And then the elites will laugh at you for your childish. What about these pumpkin spice latte people though? That goes all the way to the top. No, but it's mocked by high culture. Do you think so? Yeah. It, it, listen, it goes pretty high, <laughs> but the but the truly elite. See, it. I think I think it's I think it's actually the patriarchy that mocks it, and that's why it was so sure. That's we can. That's part of it too. Um, but that's why it was so perplexing to me when the espresso martini became like the hot drink because it felt like an Applebee's drink. Dude, what what are you talking about when it became a hot drink? Like in the early 2000s or recently? Recently. Yeah, it's ha- it's having a moment again, right? The yeah. espresso martini. What is that? Yeah. I don't know. It's confusing to me because it feels like it's a... Uh, uh... But then someone I know ordered one next to me and I drank it and it was not sweet. It was like literally espresso. No, it's not sweet, but I'm like, why would you have an espresso martini? Like, that is such a yeah, disgusting combination to me. It is gross. But no, I think you're right. I think you're right that there's an, a level of that. But I also think that there's a natural desire to like, or there isn't something physiological about sweetness as you get older and not being able to tolerate it as much. And it could be that in these cultures where they drink sweet coffee, they don't drink a ton of other, they don't have another, a lot of other sweets in their diets, maybe. I mean, possibly it's possible, but yeah. And I think like liking sweet wine also is sort of tagged as like low class, you know, like to like dry wine is, is considered a little more sophisticated. Yeah. They don't even have Riesling on the menu anymore or Moscato. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it's, yeah, it, it's it's seen as some sort of uh um sign of cultural achievement to have acquired the acquired taste the dry the dry the bitter the bitter yeah <laughs> cuz you you've almost like you've conquered your own humanity you know like you've you've prevailed against your human nature um in being able to like something so inherently unlikable yeah i guess so but then it becomes real it it does become real but i still think that there's another level of reality which is realer which is yeah you do (laughs) yeah that's what i guess you're getting at but you also like i guess that you're getting into this more much more deeply than we've ever talked about it before because it used to be that you just truly thought i didn't like dark chocolate and i only liked it because of commercials where women are in bathtubs eating dark chocolate (laughs) that's what you used to tell me and i thought that was a little insulting (laughs) (laughs) yeah i i mean i still kind of believe that but like no it's like i it's not that i don't like drinking my coffee and it's not that i don't like my dry white wine i do but it's just a different I think it's like a different level of a different kind of liking than like my like of a slice of apple pie or a cookie, you know? Yeah, for sure. But like, I I don't know. I love my coffee just as much as I like a slice of apple pie. I know, but it's different somehow. I haven't quite figured out how to express it, but it just is. Well, I like your theory. It works for me. Not in totality, because I think that there is. I really do believe that physiologically we like sweet things less as we get older. Yeah, maybe less. I remember when I was a kid hearing someone say something was too sweet and like being really confused about what that meant. Yeah. Like it would be like saying the day is it's too nice outside. And now I understand what that means. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause like when I first started drinking coffee, when I was in seventh grade, <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> I would drink it black because that's what how my mom drank it and it would be terrible. And then I was like, you can free yourself. You don't have to drink it the way your mom drinks it. Yeah. You can put a little bit of milk in it. You can't. Yeah. 
Now, I also have this theory. This might also be a little hard to express, but I really think that for something to be something that you drink every day, it can't be good tasting in that sweet way. It has to be a little bit nondescript, a Mm. little bit, because... Yes, a slice of apple pie is good and delicious and sweet, but you don't want it all the time. Like it's so part of the ability to drink coffee throughout the day is that it has a a flatness to it. Um, In our culture, I guess is what you're saying. Yeah. Because you're right. In Italy, like they have espresso in the afternoon and they put sugar in it. Mm Mm-hmm. So yeah, I wouldn't be having like four milkshakes by noon, but, but I will have, have four cups of coffee. <laughs> could you have four milkshakes when you were a kid? No, I'd probably get sick, but I would want them. <laughs> I'm going to do a quick lightning round, and then I think you should do the same. So let's just say one sentence about is it how to be or not. Okay, you go. Um, How to do nothing? Is it how to be? Absolutely. We all, just by virtue of being GMs, most likely need to be doing way more nothing than we are. Absolutely. A hundred percent. I'm with you, Matt. Personality tests. Personality tests. No, sorry. Yeah, not necessary. Don't, we're too obsessed with our personalities, by the way. Yeah, forget about it. Yeah, you're not a fixed being. Live, laugh, love. Um, hmm. Yeah. I'm going to go no. They, those <laughs> sayings just fall into the background and they're usually populated in the most grumpy people's houses. That's true. You know how I changed my answer? No. <laughs> Not how to be. Minimalism. And eh. um, I think that we could all stand to consume. Most of us could consume less. Most of us. So for me, I could be a little more minimalist. How to be. Great. Yeah, I guess like, you know, Sheen, Cheyenne. Cheyenne, whatever. Yeah. Cheyenne. No one Uh, needs more clothes. I don't need more clothes, but I want them. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Well, as I said to you yesterday, I think I finally finished my wardrobe. I went shopping yesterday. I think I'm done. I think I have all the clothes I need now. I can't wait to know until you need to re-up. I know. I'll let you know when that happens. Yeah. Okay. Ancient ways. Oh, ancient ways. That's a really hard one. It's not black and white. I can't say it's black and white. I don't remember that episode. The Lindy effect. Oh, yeah. I think I'm going to go no. I think, obviously, I think yes. I think we all need more ancient ways, ancient wisdom, ancient continuity in our lives. Mm. Habits. Habits for me is no. Habits is a yes for me. (laughs) Etiquette. Etiquette's a yes for me. Yeah. Too many rude people in this world. Too many people with their finger up their nose. Who boy. (laughs) Self-care. 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 I came out hard against self-care, I think, in that episode. Yeah. And I'm sticking with that. I think it's a a pox upon our culture. Yeah. It's... It's... It's consumerism. It's capitalism. Being French. That's I've actually have integrated that into my life. I started wearing perfume again. I don't want I don't blow dry my hair. Oh, that's so, sweet. I'm into being French. Yes. How to be. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that too. I liked that French house book. I thought it was charming. <laughs> Which is Yes. Hard. Hard yes for me. Yes. More magic. More more nature psychics again hard yes why not yeah i mean it's a yes for me but i don't think everyone needs that as a how to be no and also you know don't don't take it too seriously people yeah having your shit together yes 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 you gotta you gotta gotta have it together through this world and most people don't you know, I think there's a fear that like, there, it, oh, you're you're going to have your shit together too much. You know, like we need to go easier on ourselves. And I'm like, most people actually in my that I know 
don't actually yeah. need to go easier on themselves. <laughs> Including yeah, myself. Yeah, not surrounded by those type A. <laughs> no, I don't work in finance. So um, yeah. <laughs> maybe for a different type of person, they could go the other way. So that one I would say is very personal and contextual. Yeah, 100%. The gym, I'm obsessed with the gym. I still love the gym. I miss the gym while I'm on this vacay. No, I mean, if you like the gym, go to the gym. But if you don't like the gym, just find a different way to enjoy your movement, okay? Mm-hmm. instead of into the gm the gym is gm the gym is gm quitting Oof. quit often quit hard quit a little bit now and then that's me <laughs> donating a kidney i yes donate your kidney i'm not going to but you should that's my thought on that if we inspire someone on this podcast to donate a kidney it's as if we donated a kidney <laughs> So donate, donate your kidney today. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it, right? That's it. Please, please tell your friends about this podcast. Please tell your friends about this podcast. Also, please, you know, feel free to interact with our polls when we post yeah. them on Instagram. We notice a lot of people watching the stories and not clicking. It's, it's sick, honestly. And we never share the results. So feel free. Watching a story on Instagram and not interacting with the buttons. What's wrong with you? Don't you like pressing buttons? <laughs> yeah, that's how Cosmopolitan made its name it was from quizzes. Am I a Charlotte? Am I a Miranda? Yeah. You know? Take the am, quizzes. Am I trendy? Am I classic? Take yeah. The quizzes um okay also i have my favorite things of the year favorite things okay to-do lists i've gotten really into to do lists on my phone and i even do the little bubbles so i can check them off in the notes app it's a great favorite thing i've been really getting a lot more done sweats i've never been someone who wears sweats but now i put on a sweatshirt sometimes especially sam sweatshirt oh they're comfortable Mm -hmm. i didn't know that before they are a little fleecy interior. Peroxiding my uh, contact lenses. All these years I've just been using normal contact solution. And now I get them really clean with that peroxide solution. Follow Is the directions. Nice. No, it's you soak them. Follow the instructions on that, people. Do not fuck around. My robot vacuum. Mm-hmm. Get that cat hair up. Exfoliating with a washcloth. I get into the shower. I don't need beads. I don't need chemicals. I just scrub myself like a potato with a washcloth. That's very elegant. I like that. It makes my skin way softer. Is it dry? Do you keep it dry while you're in the shower? I wet exfoliate. Okay. (laughs) I'm going to start doing that. Ooh, yeah. And uh, big scarves. Huge. Oh, huge. Six foot wide, deep. It's a bedspread. (laughs) <laughs> she, bedspread. she wraps it around her neck she goes out on the town very chic she 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 chic well matt i've loved doing this podcast with you i can't wait to start season two can't wait please send us your episode ideas yeah episode ideas we're always taking them um and any other thoughts or questions we're there on instagram as you know all the time as i revealed in this episode <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're here we're here online we're standing by and that and i will be seeing each other soon which we never see each other he's going to be coming to the o'toole family christmas eve we'll be sure to post some fun pictures yeah yeah all right matt well I'll t- we'll see all you listeners in 2023 see you in tw- happy new year's happy holidays happy new- however you celebrate Bye-bye. bye bye bye